Stephen Factory once again, and this is deck number one. But we're actually going to go and take a really in-depth look at the deck today. We're going to start off with a quick tour so that you know what is where, because it's kind of confusing when you first look at it. Let's jump on board and then later Nick and the technical project manager, Danny, is going to go like really in depth and talk about the deck and the lamination process. All of you nerds out there, I know there's plenty of you, so Including follow you. me. We're going to try not to interrupt the workers here because they're working hard. We're going to try and stay out of their way. Bear in mind when we're looking at this deck that everything is upside down and inside out. So we're actually on the, this we're on the cool port side. We're on the port um, side deck right now. So this is obviously the transom that's easy enough to work out. And if you follow me in this direction. So this is the cockpit floor. You can kind of see like there's a little dip here, which is where the transom is. And this is where the seating for the cockpit is going to be. You can also see, obviously these are the steps up to the side deck that I'm stepping on right now. You can see where the winches and the clutches are going to be. Danny and Nick are going to talk about that in more detail later. You can see where the trifold door is going to be as well. So once you kind of start to orientate yourself, then it all kind of starts to slowly make sense. So we'll kind of go around the other side. This is the saloon settee. So you can kind of see it's obviously molded where the seats are going to be. Again, bear in mind that this is like the floor of the cockpit of the saloon. And then this is the settee here and we're going to go over the other side and have a look where the nav station and the galley is but these guys behind me they're doing the nick you're, you're gonna to have to jump in they're doing the molding for the headlining they're making plugs for the headlining now they've got a deck so these are just they're made of um okay mdf um do you reckon we can jump over there why not well, just that isn't it. yeah well we did before didn't we we'll just try not to interrupt them some life and life so now we're on this starboard side deck um, and again you can see you know the winch is here this is where um, the clutches will be transom this is where the helm seat is going to be and you can see this is where the trifold door will be so that you can very clearly see where the cockpit ends and where the saloon begins this is the galley so the galley is this u-shaped kind of space here and obviously um, the galley will be made up um, partly of furniture which will be put in later and the nav station is just here so that will be also made up later but you can kind of see where it will be positioned and what else can we see nick do you know what all these kind of quite complicated like shapes are here yeah, that's going to be the helm station yeah it's obviously part of the helm station you can see that this is the um the line story so this is where the lines lines are going to be captured and then nick if you just pan up a little bit you can see the whole front deck and you can see where the hatches are going to be, where the lockers are going to be. Obviously, you can see the like the catwalk going up to the anchor. And you can also see where the windlass is going to be, just at the top of that, that catwalk there. And you can also kind of make out the hatches for this is, so we're thinking this is the guest cabin. The opening hatch will be there. Um, but this is the Nick's workshop. I hope I don't fall off. So Nick's workshop will be underneath here. You can also see where the jib track will be as well. So now we are going to have a chat with Danny and Nick. Danny is going to go into really in-depth detail about the deck mold and I think that you guys are going to find it really interesting. So um, keep watching, we're going to do that right now. So here we are on the deck of the 1370 with Danny. Thanks for taking time out today to, to kind of like run through this with us. Firstly, weight. Everyone wants to know about the weight. Okay, so we got an estimate weight on this boat of about 1.1 1 .1 tons, 1,100 kilos. Yep. Current estimates of uh, resin consumption and uh, fibers, uh, we're looking to be on that or maybe even slightly under. Okay, so brilliant. So you are within a, the tolerances of what you thought it was going to be, kind of like the actual weight when it comes out you're going to be under. Yeah, so the, the engineers, they, they work out the fibers, the weight of the foam, the uptake of the foam, and the amount of resin, the, the fraction weight of resin to fiber. And that gives us a good estimate of, of what the boat will be. And then we look at that when we actually cut the real fibers, get the real kit and add the real resin to everything. And everything we're slightly under, 
so uh, we're on the right side of it. Oh, that's brilliant. Look, we talked to James last week about like a lot of the kind of principles of the phone call and how like the grid system works and how like you know you're working with everyone and with James and the rest of the team to make sure that the infusion is is the word stable or, or, or complete. Is that a better better term? Or yeah, you want to make sure that your your parts are in the right place. So you're 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 adding the right amount of fiber. Sometimes with a new boat, you're adding the fiber and you think uh, this is this is what the engineers specified yep. but maybe you know we want to put a little bit extra thickness there to give us a little bit more security yep. or something like that so there's sometimes you have some some small little bits just to air on the side of caution but this one we've you know we've we've pretty much stuck stuck to the plan and you know it's coming out great materials so we've got what have we got here there's a lot i can see and we've talked about this a lot of carbon fiber obviously when we use carbon fiber we can save about one third of the weight yep. from from a normal e-glass especially in the unidirectionals so the unidirectionals or one direction fiber acting a bit like a beam or a, a structure a bridge where we would currently use say a 900 gram of e-glass you normally you can drop that down to like one layer of 300 gram carbon uni so it's a big saving yeah. with 900 grams of uh, e-glass you'd need maybe seven eight hundred grams of resin to go with it okay. with 300 gram of carbon you only need maybe 250 grams of the resin not only are you saving weight on the fiber but you save weight on the resin uptake as well people understand that carbon fiber is stronger because just the actual material science involved in it but the fact that you have less thickness because you need less layers means you also need less resin so you get this kind of multiplier effect from carbon fiber correct yeah yeah off the top of your head what would this be if you had just if it was all Ooh. all e-glass yeah like 30 maybe <laughs> Yeah, maybe another couple hundred kilos. Yeah, it's, it's significant. And you use these, obviously, are these high load areas where you've got all this carbon fiber? Yeah, so you can see all the black areas. Yep. So we've got the shrouds here. We have the, uh, the coach roof housing. Yep. And the main part is where the, the mast bulkhead comes. So everything kind of ties in together. Yep. We have most of these, uh, especially with the mast, is what we call a pad laminate. So it's a very thick beam laminate runs across the boat. The mast bulkhead will join into. And there's the same situation on the hull, which runs across the hull and the mast sits into that. So you end up with a pad laminate under the mast bulkhead and above the mast bulkhead, which creates like an I-beam. So you yep. get a very, very strong, stiff structure. Yeah. So a kind of the whole I-beam thing, the way I get it, it's like a, an RSJ. If you have something which is I-shaped in cross-section, then it's a lot stronger than actually, if, even if it was solid, just because of the way that torsional forces and kind of forces are going to be applied to it. Yeah, well, the horizontal beams give the torsional structure yep. to the vertical beam. One can't bend this way because of the top one, and the other one can't bend the other way because of the bottom one. Okay, so the, the I-beam kind of like principle, is it, it's, you've got it just on the bulkheads or is there other parts of the boat? I know that there's one at the stern. The main bulkhead, the mast bulkhead has it, Yep. We also have it at the stern. Yep. That ties in with the uh, deck and hull and the, and the aft bulkhead, which is carbon. Those are our two main ones. But we also have running down through our hull crease on the on the foredeck, other unis that run into the, the forward furniture. Okay, as well as that. All right, fantastic. That, that is really, really useful. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's go and look at other parts of the boat and then we can kind of like continue this discussion. Thanks, Danny. So, uh, <laughs> Danny, and, uh, Danny and I are having a discussion because obviously this is a pretty complex shape. Um, yeah, we're trying to work out who stands where so that I don't look like a short ass, which I am anyway. Anyway, Danny, look, moving swiftly on. Statistics, everyone, they want to know this. The size of this deck. What have we got? The, the square meterage we have is 124 square meters. Right. And that includes all of the saloon area and, you know, the main deck. Yeah, okay. Brilliant. So 124 square meters. This is different to other design. Well, actually, it's the first boat board I've seen in this level of complexity. But you've also got a lot of these areas. This is the internal furniture molding that's built into the, into the deck, right? Yeah. The reason we have such a high square meterage is because we do have basically the, the saloon furniture incorporated into the deck mold and that then unlike our other boats we have a coach roof and a window mold yep. so that then goes on top okay it does make things a lot more complex for us infusing but in terms of the fabrication and production side 
it's yeah. actually much easier because more can be done on the boat and done in the deck before it gets married to the hull. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. But I, I case you're also then building stiffness into everything if you've just got one piece. It's just one huge, great 124 square meter fiberglass shape, right? Yeah, it's much better for the engineering because from gunnel to gunnel, the, the structure is at a lower height, given a lower center of gravity for that continuous structure. Okay, so just to orient me there, so we're upside down and back to front. So this is starboard companion way, I yes. think, and that's port companion way yep. over there. So I these inserts here are for the cabin. galley area, yep. and then this would be the top of the window frame. Yep as you come round at the galley. So uh, can I just ask, are these raised because they, they, they form like a, what in dentistry would be called a ferrule, like a, a, a something to actually put a cabinetry onto to stop it shifting? Yeah, I mean, there's two reasons really. One is to give the cabinetry somewhere to locate. Yep. And two, it also gives us a plinth that we can then put in covered lighting and a tow rail. Yep. So, you know, you have your tow kick already in there. Okay. In other ways of doing things, if you just put everything down onto a flat deck, you then have to finish that corner, which okay. takes a lot of work to make it nice. Yep. So if you have this raised up, then you just have your cabinetry a little bit oversized with some mood lighting underneath and nice. pretty much it's uh, job done. This, I guess, is trifold door track or? Yep, this is the track for the trifold door and also incorporates the gutter for the cockpit draining. Yep. It also takes in a lot of additional strength because you have, as you can see, a flat floor. Yep. With a flat floor structure, very important, or you're gonna get uh, a lot of flexion, stress. Yeah, yeah flexion. Okay. One thing I did notice when we were looking at the furniture the other day, there's this kind of hexagonal foam core that you're now using for certain parts. Is that just because it's, because a hexagonal shape gives you a great ability to form complex shapes? No, it's actually, it, this is a material called Soric. It's an infusible material. Right. And the hexagonals actually are, form part of the flow material. Yep. So with the hexagonals, that's where the resin will flow in okay. and, and along. Without that, it would become like a big blanket. Okay. And uh, same as normal core mat, you cannot infuse because right. it just soaks and becomes very, very slow for moving the resin. So the hexagonals actually give that a path for the air to evacuate and for the resin to travel. Cool, cool. I know that we talked last week about this. It's a pretty complex shape. I mean, these areas here, sure, infusing that has got to be a bloody nightmare, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's no two ways about it, it's difficult. <laughs> Another feed that will come around the outside so that we try to get everything to reach the perimeter at the same time so that we can then come down the sides. Yeah, okay. And even that then has some problems because on one side we have the saloon furniture, yep. which has a down, a horizontal and another okay. down. This side, it comes straight down. Right. So we, we need to try and time that one earlier so that it comes to the next line at the same time that this one will come to the okay. same line. Cool. So right. it's about opening valves and closing valves and timing things. Yeah, it's stressful. Uh, this one wasn't too stressful. I think more of the stress was in the planning. The actual fusion itself went very well, went as planned. So what was that what you say? Fail to plan, right? Fail, fail to plan. Yeah, plan, plan to, to fail. fail. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. There's a few other bits I want to talk to you about, so let's just walk over, have a chat over there about the next part of this uh, whole deck. It's not my sexuality coming through the... I, I, I like this. I think this whole knee thing is... Do I need to go to that one? Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> Normally got dirty knees. You've got to be careful. Normally crouch down. I've got all dirty knees. Anyway, uh, Danny, look, we've uh, moved aft again, and I do want to run through a few things with Danny about this. So reinforced areas. We've talked about the I-beam structure. We talked about the carbon fiber I-beam principle. Danny, talk us through all this. Obviously, there's a lot of planning gone into the design stage to make sure that everything was located and planned first so that we had an upstand or a dent or something in the mold that, that showed us exactly where to put things. And also, you know, makes it look nice on the deck when it's, when it's finished. There's no non-skid in the area or anything like that. So here we have our area for the winches. And you can see the rope boxes which are being developed right now will come back through to this area, yep. lead up to the organizers and the cam cleats, clutches. And then we have our alloy plates in here for our winches. Oh. I was saying before that, you know, in our last boat, we didn't, this was not all glassed in, which is, I, I really like the fact that it is, it is all, you know, glass. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take much more effort to glass it in. We bed them down on a slurry 
and that makes sure that the part between the alloy and the deck is, is fully fitted so you're not going to get any crunching or voiding yeah. underneath there and it takes nothing really just to put a couple of layers over yeah. the top just to hold them in place. It's also reassuring and yeah, yeah it is, it's pretty reassuring. That's brilliant. So I mean you can actually see now the visual pathway, winch, winch, obviously you clutch is there and then that moves forward and you can see this whole contiguous line and then you can see where the line jack, where obviously everything curves around to take the lines to the mast. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Anything else that kind of like you want to mention while we're discussing all this? I mean, it is pretty complicated, <clears throat> but you know, there's so much that we've talked about. Like any other features that you think are important to people that want to kind of like um, know about boat design? Well, you can see along the, the hull join, we also have all of the areas in there for the cleat, stanchions, any other upstands for uh, other deck gear yep. already. The reason that we don't put our backing plates and things on there is because we have to do the, the hull join. Yeah. So when that goes on the join, the backing plate would be in the way. Yeah. And then after the join is on there, in certain high load areas, it will be taped. Yep. And then it will get obviously the backing plate and will get through bolted. And the through bolts are actually included in the engineering when they looked at the loads of the of the stress area. So they actually counted in those and said, okay, we can get away with this much taping because we're going to get some extra mechanical fixing from those bolts. Cool. Brilliant. Danny, that's amazing. Look, I hope you enjoyed this. Danny, like, super experienced, all around nice guy as well. We'll be back again with another episode. This is getting more and more complicated, and I'm pretty pleased that we've got, like, experts to kind of talk us through all this. So, listen, I hope you enjoyed that. If you like what you have seen today, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, make sure your notification bell is on. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again and for every week for the next six months until this boat is complete. So, take care, have a lovely afternoon. See you soon, goodbye.